Hi, good morning, good morning everyone. Um, right now it's already 11, lah, so uh, we are going to start. Today's topic is governance with center of excellence, COE. Lah. Oh, let's go over the agenda for today. So we will have a quick um, SRKK introductions. Um, before that, I will introduce uh, myself and also the, the consultant. Lah. Oh. After that, we will have a recap of what is Power Platform, and then we will deep dive into COE components, right? Um, how would you want to set it up, and then the particular features, functions, uh, sections of the COE, and also we will have the demo, right? A live demo, how it is actually being utilized, what would you expect lah, after you install it, right? Um, and so forth. Then we will follow by uh, a quick summary of today's topic and then we will have a game session right um yeah so so do do stay for the game session um i look forward uh to be with you together throughout today's sessions and then we will have a quick q and a lah. yeah um during the holes do do drop in any questions that you have in our chat group right in our chat or in the q and a sections right so before um waiting for too long, let's let's do a quick introduction. Uh, uh, me myself is a sales consultant in SRKK. I've been with SRKK for more than five years. Uh. So uh, being sales consultant, so if you have any uh, questions on the licensing side or on product specific in uh, business applications. Uh, right around SharePoints, Power Apps, Power Automate, Workflows, Name Tags, um, or e-signature solutions, right? And even RPA. Nowadays, um, it, we have a lot of customer looking at RPA as well, lah, robotic process automations. So yeah, do do look for me. Uh, look for SRKK. They will look for me. So yep. And today's speaker will be Aniza, right? She's um. Uh, I work closely with her. She's a very great person. Um, she's a project team leader, project manager, uh, an excellent uh, programmer as well. So uh, today she will introduce uh, what COE is, right? Um, yeah, do, do raise questions when you guys have it. And then we have um, our Aniza to help us to answer those, right? Of course, for certain questions that are very um technical or it takes too long to answer we can definitely you know bring it out from this session lah, right okay give me a few minutes to go through srkk introductions i'm sure most of you know uh, who we are right but for those that um just started joining so i hope i can give you uh, a quick preview lah, what srkk is right so um, in a nutshell, SRKK, um, we, we help our organizations, right? We are uh, trusted consultants. We provide consultancies um, to help to move uh, your organizations towards digital transformations, right? Leveraging, of course, on M365, lah, right? Uh, because most customer that we have, yes, they are uh, enrolled in M365 or O365. However, they also would like to know how they can best utilize their licensing, right? Uh, yes, SharePoint for forms, uh, documents, but how about later on towards applications and then towards workflows? And then, and then once you have so many of these um, documents, workflows, forms all over, how do you governance, right? How do you keep track of all those? So this is today's session. Lah. So we started like uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, established in 1997 in Clang Valley, right? Our boss um, has a, a, a very a very good vision, lah, right? We started small, uh, just a few people during that time. Until today, we have almost 100 staff employees and it is growing, right? As you can see, we have uh, various locations uh, from Klang Valley all the way to Johor, later on to Singapore. Right now, uh, it's in Singapore, Philippines, and later on, we'll expand um, all over APEC region. Uh, right? We are a leading partner with Microsoft. So 
um, any questions or inquiries about Microsoft solution, be on premise, um, you know, you can, uh, or the Cloud Asia side, you can definitely reach us, lah, right, for consultancies. And for BAC, BAC is Business Application Consultancy. This is, um, we are from the BAC division in SRKK, right? We provide uh, consultancies, we provide migrations, implementations, applications, developments, uh, trainings, uh, all, and also system support program. Lah. Uh, so in a nutshell, is pretty much um, anything that can help you to achieve your digitalization journey. Um, we are more than happy to be part of your journey, right? Yeah, we can do handholding, we can do ad hoc services, or we can do uh, long term service as well, right? On the left hand side, just real quick, just to go through this, uh, our various uh, key items, lah, right? SharePoint, Power Apps, Power Automate, Azure Stack, uh, Nintex, DocuSign, uh, plus many, many more, lah, depending on different scenario we are able to uh, work together with you for the solutions law. Um, so, okay. So this is just a quick introduction. Um, before we jump into COE, let's take a quick pull, right? Um, is do you and um, your organization use Power Apps and Power Automate, right? Um, so yes, please, please fill it in. Um, again, the, 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 the pool question is, do you and your organization use Power Apps or Power Automate, right? Hmm. Okay, good. So far, I have... Um, uh almost even lah even answer lah or oh, uh, those that say yes and those that say no lah okay very good thank you very much so next let's continue next for next i will uh present uh, anisa i'll uh, pass to you for the following sections lah mm, anisa over to you thank you robin yeah Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session. So again, I'm Aniza, Solution Consultant, as I have years of experience in this Microsoft Power Platform technologies. And also, I'm leading my own team to deliver the right solutions to the customers. So based on the poll result just now, it seems uh, the result is equal. So most of the uh, of you is already onboarded into Power Apps and Power Automate. However, still some are um, haven't into the Power Apps and Power Automate, but it's fine. It's not too late to uh, start it now. Okay, for those who already be on board, uh, it's a great initiative for you to start off with these Power Platforms. Okay, so now let's go into the quick recap or the introduction of the Power Platform. Okay, so Microsoft Power Platform is a low-code uh, low platform across Office 365, Azure, Dynamic 365, and standalone applications. So this Power Platform has the four products that listed down there. The first one will be on Power BI for analyzing, Power Apps for creating the web or mobile applications, and Power Automate is for business process or the approval process automations. And the last one is a Power Virtual Agent, which is more on creating the chatbots without running the uh, codes. So all of these part of are by the components or by the common components uh, like a Dataverse, AI Builder, and Data Connectors. So these components has uh, providing a single integrated solution that um, to solve the enterprise application development needs in a faster way. <coughs> Due to this uh, low code platform, many organizations are now encouraging their employees to become the developers in creating the applications to uh, use for their own or even for the organization's levels. 
So with this low code method, so it will be easier for all of the users to onboard into this as a citizen developers. Okay, since uh, there are some of you already onboarded into the Power Apps and Power Automate, let's look into how many of your organization already uh, started or onboarded into these citizen developers. So let's start with a poll on uh, how does your organization value or promote these citizen developers. So the citizen developers means it allowing other departments to create their own solutions. Uh, it's not only meant for the IT, but it can be any departments who onboard into this development, the power platform developments. Yeah, so let's start with the poll now. I can see um, everyone is answering. Let's look, uh, just, just wait for some time. Okay. So it seems uh, many of you already started or already uh, on board into this uh, platform development as a citizen developers, which is really good. Congratulations for all of you. And now when you have your own team or when you promote these citizen developers in your organization, there are some questions to think of. Do you want to know what? Okay, first, how do we get insights into what the teams are building and subsequently utilizing? Means when you are, uh, letting other develop departments to be developed onto these power platforms, how do you know what has been developed or what has been utilized in your environments? Second, have we approved the connection to data systems or other resources? So is there any resources that be restricted from use by the app makers? And the third one would be how do we limit the exposure to data leaks? So in your organization, how do you manage your data being exposed to the external people? And the last one is how do we manage the use? So it can be users usage or it can be the app makers. How do they develop or how do they create the apps? So all of this question is something to think about when you have a team or when you are onboarding into these citizen developers. So to answer all of this question, it will be by the governance with COE, the center of excellence. So in this section, I will walk through the Power Platform COE and how it can help organizations to scale up and help power app makers develop apps on a large scale while adhering to best practice at the same time. So let's dive into the COE introductions. What is COE about? So the COE is an organization drive innovation and improvement to share the knowledge and success and at the same time providing the standards, consistency and governance to the organizations. So it also allow the IT admins to have much better visibility of what is being created in the Power Platform, who is developing application and how often they are used uh, and much more. So all of this information can be covered under these components of COE. So what are those components of COE? There are three components listed. First is admin, governance, and nature. First, uh, the admin is, which is basically gaining the insight into your power platform adoption, which kind of gathering the data of the sites the result of the platform that is being used. So the value drive in this admin is enterprise awareness and excitement, showcase the value of analytics and make analytics come alive. And once you have the much established administration sites of what happening on your power platforms and also how the apps are created, then you move on to the governance process. 
So it's where you start taking the controls of the terms, driving a higher standards and auditing the whole process of how apps are created. It's more on the compliance and auditing process as it returns over there. And uh, the value drive in this governance is more on discipline to use case development and selection of highest value of work. So it's overall the process of the compliance, how it's been developed. So, and the last one is the nurturing. So nurturing is the process of encouraging more and more app makers to join or to come onto this platform and guide and educating them in the part of this citizen developer journey. So it's not only educating, guiding them. At the same time, you also will be sharing your applications or the development methods or the best practice to work among each and others. Yeah. So these three components is the basic that been covered into this COE for the governance purpose. Okay. Next, let's look into how this COE been set up. So when you know what COE can be done and what are those inside the COE, now let's see how the COE been set up. So this COE been set up using the starter kit provided by Microsoft. So this starter kit is a collection of components and tools designed to uh, get started or like on the strategy adoptions and also support on the power platforms. So this starter kit has the three main sections over there. First will be the monitor or so-called admin section. Second will be your governance. Third will be on the nurture. So there are subsections on what of what each of these main sessions will be provide or will be give the information about. So uh, more than other than these main sections, they also has other features of these COE kits. So the other features of COE kits are filterings, sortings, export to data into Excel of each section or maybe on the PowerPoint and PDF. So it means once you are seeing this COE dashboard and it can be exported into the data into Excel PowerPoint and the PDF for your some kind of integration purpose or some reporting uh, for your auditing reports or some other management report kind of purpose. And also you have this copy data analytics as a feature and there is a focus mode in the case that you need to present to management and which has the full of uh, the analytics report. You want to just focus on the specific session is where you have the focus mode. And the last one is on more on the collaboration side. So where this COE kit, this COE dashboard can be shared with this Microsoft Teams channel. Yeah. So uh, instead of we are using the link to access the COE dashboard in the Power BI, you also will have the uh, visibility into the Microsoft Teams once you embed that app into your Teams channel. So you can have the instant update, you can just collaboration over there, you can comment on each of the sections or overall the dashboards, or if your management want to have a look, there is no need for them to wait until the link been shared. You can be always go into the Microsoft Teams and then just have a look on what is happening in your environment. Yeah. So before I go into each of the sections details, Let's look into how this COE looks like, the view of the COE. Okay, so the COE dashboard view, okay, as you've seen on the left, it is the all the components, all the information listed down, and on your right is the three main sections, as I mentioned, monitor, govern, and nature. So the monitor, govern, and nature, it has its own subsections later in the demo section i'll go through each and every of it but now for your view this is the overall user view of how the coe dashboard looks like okay let's go into each of these components first will be on the monitor or called admin sections so in the admin section the function of it is to give an overall or oversight of tenant resources. So means as an admin, you need to know what is happening in your tenant. 
even though you have the power apps power platform all the license being shared to all the users and you have onboarded as a citizen developers as a admin you want to have the visibility of what is happening how what are the apps have been created what kind of connectors being used so is that using the right resources or is that something that been exposed to uh, the data exposed to the uh, external uh, parties so these are the overall uh, side of the um, platform that you have so it's not only categorized as power apps and power automate it also covers the power virtual agent which is on the chat box so you will know who has been created what are the chat box and how is the usage of chat box so as an admin you can have the overall picture and from this picture you will know how is the adoption of your users towards this uh, particular applications or this overall power platform technologies so once your admin session is done you can see all the inside of what is happening and then now let's look into the governance so governance is for the admin to use the insight gathered just now in the admin sessions and then drive into the actions like performing the risk assessments on uh, identify the what are the applications has been archived often and also unused resources so this app also can be used to grant users or other ownership of resources archive or delete so in this governance is more on the compliance or the auditing purpose so you will know what are the application been active what are the application been archived and uh, what are the things been shared to whom and then who has been deleted especially for your uh, record of tracking so and the last one will be on the nature the nature the nature will be more on encouraging people or encouraging your app makers to have that collaborations or to make use of this platform so it will be give you the overview of which makers are using which connectors and app shared among each other app makers so in this nature section it will be give you the overview of uh, how many app makers app makers in this case can be your citizen developers so how many app makers has been onboarded into this power platform development so how many are very excited or trying to create more applications onto that and which app makers application has been used the most and which are the connectors they are using is either um, standard connectors or premium connectors i will be explaining to you further during that demo sessions yeah so these are the three main components of coe as a startup that microsoft is offering for now and now let's look into the actual demo of coe features So this COE, as you have, you are seeing on my screen, it is on the Power BI platform. So means this COE, all the information of your Power platform, Power Apps, Power Automate is been getting from the, each of the products, but we will be compiling all of this information into a nice uh, user uh, dashboard view. Okay, so in this dashboard view, as you see, you have this on your left is all the components and the on right will be on the tiles format of the components. Okay, first section will be on the monitor, second will be governor and nature as I mentioned just now. And the first monitor session, what we have is the overview of each of these products like a power apps, power automation, chat box to see the overview of what is inside. And then you have these custom connection connectors and also on the flow side. So flow is the words that use for the power automate. Okay. Now let's look into what is in the overview of power app. Okay, so when you click on the overview of power apps. Okay, it will be show you some analytics over here. So on the top, you will see the total environments, custom connectors, flow make, app makers, flow makers, and the bot makers. 
okay so from this view you will know like what has been happening in your environment so as an admin you want to know what are the environments has been used what how many environments are in your tenant because the environments if you look at some uh, introduction on the environments right and environments has few types them default production sandbox trial and developer so there are five kind of environments that you can use and mostly the default environment has been there and many of uh, the citizen developers will be subscribed into the developer environment so called developer environments which microsoft give them a free platform for them to try and error or to try do the developments and also you will have a trial environment some users they will be subscribed to trial where they will be try with the first 30 days first on app development and then later they will be convert that trial into production if they want to go live with their users so this kind of environments has been uh, have the view of what is what are the applications inside is only by the environment makers so there are two roles over here one is environment makers another one is the app makers so app maker doesn't have to be the environment maker okay so environment maker can be different person who create the environment uh, and there is an app maker who has access only to develop the apps and as an admin you all only will be seeing the apps being created in each environments on by specific uh, by each of the environments so if you look at our normal power uh, platform power apps or power automate admin center so we do have our admin to see some kind of uh, reports over there but that report is most mostly on the uh, based on each environments so if the report is that but when you want to see what are the environments and what are the applications inside the environments you need to click each of the environment go for one by one so that is where the coe makes the difference the coe will give you the full overall insight of what is happening how many environments are there so as you seen on this um, left side the environments are the the list of environments and also apps been created in each environments and the flows it flows can be cloud flows or can be desktop flows it can be rpa the bots so you will never know what kind of a, uh, application what kind of things has been developed under the each environments without having this coe dashboard view to have the overall view of what is inside being created and on the right there is a top app maker so when once you have uh, given the development option to your other employees who becoming the citizen developers so you will know who are the top makers who are really utilizing this platform to develop on the applications so in here you will be seeing the top app makers and also the apps that been created by that app makers so you will have all of these and you can see the number of app makers being created okay. and on your right it will be more on the cities that that app makers are in during the uh, making of creating of applications so that is very much useful when you have a branches or you have some other developers on you know, other countries or cities so maybe from malaysia you have um, some other branches like in singapore philippines so it's where when you have many your developers around the other cities other places it's it will be show you exactly on what where are they uh, to deliver or to develop these kind of applications and on the top analytic is more on the connectors and the total app makers is just now as i showed you total flow makers and bot makers so i will go further on to the flow makers okay so when you have this dashboard you will be seeing the analytics on your top on your right on your left so in the case if you want to focus more just for let's say this environment so i don't want to have like a uh, look of the others because it's too many numbers over there so i just want to have a view of just the environments so what i can do is i can spotlight so i can do the uh, focus more just to show on that specific sections of it 
and this session it can be uh, on each of these and also the other features will be on the filtering so you can filter the sessions uh, from on each of the sections or from this one subsection you can go to the filters on your right you can I, I expand this you can do the filtering you can choose like a, what kind of environment uh, what is the boards what is the apps is a base on the theory based filtering it's a similar to kind of sharepoint but it is uh, more on the application filtering so uh, that is the filtering above and also the sorting each of the session you can have the sort if let's say your management is so very much interested on uh, can i know how many of them has created applications i don't look at the flows now so it's where you can have the sort the application sorting or if you want to know if you want to keep track of the flows being created or the bots because you just newly introduced on the bot so you want to have a, a filtering option of the bots you can do so on this um, sections yeah so and uh, each of these sections also have this export data options so maybe when you are seeing this in the power bi you want to export this data into maybe excel format to be integrated with some other systems or maybe to for you to create some reporting for auditing purpose so what you can do is you can click on the export data which will show you the option of whether do you want to export into excel or csv format so you can choose which format you want and then you can click on the export it will be uh, it will be automatically a download by excel files for you so on the excel file it will be show you the environments the list of environments seems like i'm just exporting on the each uh, sections so this will be show you that table format so you can have a look over here so environments you have application clouds desktop and what exactly same information as what you have seen just now in this coe dashboard okay it was the each sections exports but there are other sections at export as well which is on the top you can export into excel PowerPoint and the PDF, which will be export the full sections into that specific format. So with this, you can have more uh, flexible reporting instead of just looking at the browser or the desktop view. No. Now, let's look into the second section, the subsection of the admin. Okay, we have more to go. So the first one uh, was the Power Apps. We have looked on to what is Power Apps and Environments. Now let's go into the Power Automate. So in the Power Automate, it's a similar data you will have, but it's more on the flow. It will be just focused on the flow count. So how many flows be developed? So it's either cloud, desktop, and the chat box. And which uh, environment has the most flows? So if you look at the just now, the Power Apps, that environment used was different. So maybe for, uh, for the application creation, the environment used was the different environment than the flow creations. So you can see now our SRKK environment has the most flows over here, 363, the numbers. And the least, there is a test environments and the desktop flows, application, and bots. So again, there is a flow makers. So each of these for Power Apps, Power Automate, and even for the chat box, if you have the chat box being created or being introduced to your organizations, you will have the reporting who are the top chat box makers and how many makers are there. Yep. And which environment has been used for these bots. So they, even though there are many environments, 18 or uh, 10 environments over here, but there is only one environment has this bots development inside. Okay, so you will have the bots environments. And the next one will be on the environments. So uh, you have seen each of the components like Power Apps, Power Automate, and that specific environments. But now this environment analytics will show you what type of environments are there, what is the most used environments. As just now I was showing, I was saying, there is a five type of environments, right? So here in this analytics report now, you can see the two type. First is developer. Second one is the trial. 
but you will have more when you have your organization uh, on board into these applications so you will have your productions your sandbox so and, and also on the other trial um, trial kind of environments yeah so you will have the count of what are the number of environments we use so in this analytics you can see okay developer being four environments so on the trial will be on the four and each environment okay what are the application how many application being created so the coe demo is the top environments that has the 18 power apps or applications or chat box and the desktop flows of cloud flows is 22 and the rest are the less and also you can see the environment by creator so as i was showing the difference between environment maker and app maker just now so here it will show you very clear idea of what is environment maker and app maker so as just now you are seeing the top app makers right on the list on the overview and now you can see on the environment makers so these environments by creator it has like a total of eight of a total of six uh, five of them so these five of them can be any environment maker it, they can be developer they can be trial uh, environments so you can see how many environments been created by each of these creators so the users who created and also we can have the visibility look of which the department has been used the most let's say you have your IT departments that developing. At the same time, you are opening this um, citizenship de developer. Um, you are encouraging all of other departments like your business users. Uh, it can be like a marketing, uh, it can be like a HR, or it can be some other uh, users, other department users who are very much interested in creating their own application for the internal purpose. So they can onboard into this platform development so in that case, you will know okay, which department has most use, most utilization number of application for the creations. So in this case, you will have the idea. Okay, so this department has most use. That means they are very much interested. So we should be go further, enhance further on giving them more resources or giving them more the connectors or it can go beyond of that integration if they really require it. And on your right, you can see the filtering option that you want to filter down. If let's say I'm going to filter one of these users, and you can do that, uh, you can view the data being filtered only for that users. So this on your right, you can see the filtering and what kind of environments. So if that user have few environments, it only will be showing you that environments. And also, if let's say you want to see on the specific time uh, period. So if you want to look at, okay, when I started to onboard these citizen developers, okay, so from the day that I started and now it's a one month as a management, I want to see what is the use. Can I see the one month of the time period or the analytics report? So it's where you can do some kind of a filterings over here. And next, let's look into other functions of this admin. So we, we are still in the admin year. We haven't go into other sections yet. So even admin, uh, as you see, it's giving you uh, more uh, visibility or more view of what is uh, inside. Okay, so you will have, uh, let's look into connections. Okay, so let me just give you some uh, some idea on what is the connection is about. So if you are the flow makers, if you are used to create the process flow using Power Automate, you will be seeing all the uh, actions and each of the action will have the connections. So the connection can be Office 365 or it can be any other connections. So in the connection, we have two type of connections. One is standard connectors, 
another one will be a premium connectors so the standard connector is everything on the office 365 platform it can be connect your sharepoint on drive excel file and any other data you can connect your azure site but if you look at the premium connectors it's where in the case if you need to connect to your sap your erp data sql server and any other system like your oracle any other system we can have this premium or if you want to create the chatbots, AI builder, these are those connectors that require premium connectors. So in this report, you will know how many connectors being used. So here you can see there is approvals, there is a common data service, even there is someone has used Dropbox, Excel files and dynamic Office 365, OnDrive, SharePoint is the most used and you, you can even use the Salesforce, RSS, Power Platforms, and all of these connections. So from here, you will know what has been used the most, how you can further move into this, and which one will be the best practice, since like there are many of them use this. So what is the uh, benefit, or what is the advantage of using this than the other connectors? So you will have the overall look. And the makers connect connections, so what kind of, who are the makers and what have the application, what are the application they have and what kind of connectors they have used over here. Okay. And the app connections are uh, how many, these connections has been used in what application. So what are the application listed? These are the list down of all the application. You can have a look, uh, daily requests, meeting room booking, device ordering. So all of this application somehow has been using some of these connections. It can be standard, it can be premium. So here you will have the filtering again to show on the connection. And uh, there will be some kind of a flows and makers in details where um, you will have some idea of what has been created. Okay. Now let's look into this uh, deep dive of the apps, club flows, uh, and also chatbots. Okay, this is more or less on the overview, but it will be drilled down deep down on the analytics report, like the trend of creating who is the active departments and what is the percentage of the cloud flows. So you can see in these environments, the total of 402 cloud flows are there. So you have all of these, each of these components. Yeah, so it is similar to uh, all these uh, cloud or the desktop flows all the applications okay so once the admin has all the overview next is the governance so in the governance as i mentioned it has the risk assessment it also archive it also has the license assessments okay so now let's look into app archive what this app archive is is about so you want to know many of you of the app makers will be developing this application and some of that maybe is not being used now it will be on the archive list so they might be archived this uh, application maybe it's not used anymore so and also you will know who is the maker who which app makers application was archived the most so you will have that trending the reports over here on your right and on the risk assessment. So you will know what kind of the applications being used and how, what are the users, uh, what are the app being shared by the users and who are the owners over here. And, and the last one on the governance is more on the license uh, assignment. So you need to know what is the uh, license being assigned and uh, what kind of uh, connectors or they have used. So the license is based on the connectors or the connector is based on the license. We so we are uh, vice versa. So on the SharePoint integration, on these licenses mostly are using the SharePoint, which is the standard Microsoft license. You have SharePoint, you have approvals, you have logic flows and Office 365 outlooks. So these are the standard connectors being used, which is logic flow approvals. If, you, if you're very familiar on the approval process, you will be using these approval actions. And as I said, all of these, each, each of these actions has the filtering. 
and uh, the next one will be on the nature side okay so nature is more on showing the numbers or the details of the makers uh, consumptions or makers uh, developments on the applications so just now we have seen the makers in all of the components yes it will be showing you all the uh, makers list but it is more on the specifically on the applications or flows or chatbots but this one is on the makers who has the top or who has the top contributor of the applications and the flows so in this um, in this uh, analytics, it shows like the to total of 18 app makers and 17 cloud flow makers, three desktop and two chatbots. So it means among all the app makers, not everyone is using chatbots. Not everyone is using desktop. Maybe some of them, they just want to try out what is this RPA because RPA is one of the desktop flow, which is gives you really a good um, solution for, for you to save more time and the cost in the repetitive jobs okay and to make the some of the process automations so some of your uh, users might be interested okay let me try on this or the chatbots so all of this being seen over here and also from here you can list you can do the restrictions if let's say you doesn't want uh, all your doesn't want your your users to go into the chatbot or uh, desktop so you can have that uh, restrictions over here and based on the app makers you will know all the make makers trend over here but at the same time you want to know where is which department this maker is from so they have like active departments it can be it or it can be any other departments that uh, can be shown you okay how many of them are very interested on this and these are the uh, the map as i mentioned the app makers can see like a where they are in the app maker so we are at the clang valley so it shows the area clang over here so uh, as a srkk uh, in our development is mostly is happening over here so it will be showing this um clang valley map but it's again as i as i said it is depends on where are you and where is your team is on so it depends on the team the map will be shown off okay and the next one will be on the app usage or the app adoption or the app shares okay once you have your makers to be use uh, this uh, platform to develop application you also want to know how many application has been shared among the app makers because some app makers they will be creating another app makers they might be want to create the similar application so what they can do is they can share the application so this person can share the application to another app maker where the app maker they can edit or they can just uh, make another copy of the application to work on it so this will show how many apps are being shared with others so what is the highest apps use or which apps can be used as a template so since this app main shared most of the time we can make it as a template yeah so this will be give you the overview of what has been shared and the last one as a whole management whole admin you want to know which app has the most usage okay so many of them is creating the app what is in the top what is the most used when it was launched so this would be the app launch trend okay when you have a, a, a graph over there you can see and it has some by the user which user has launched launched the app the most so and also which app is the trending app the top so associate inside so you can see the unique users how many users are using these applications okay and um, the last one Okay, so when once we look into monitor, govern, and nurture, as I said, each of these can have a, a, a can have the detailed information, and this is so called for just startup. And if you ask me, can it be enhanced or can it be customized as for your organization needs? Yes, of course it can be done. Just this COE dashboard is from the starter kit provided by Microsoft as just start up for you to come up with this uh, report or to have the visibility of what is happening and the last one i'm i'm i would like to end here with the uh, this teams collaborations 
So the Teams collaborations, instead of you are looking at the dashboard, you will have the view on your Teams channel. So exactly same function, exactly same thing you will be seeing in your Teams. So on your Microsoft Teams, you will be seeing uh, another icon on this left pane there on the Power BI. On, and when you click on the Power BI, you will have all of these components be ready. So from these components, you can have a view just now as I went through one by one. And when you go to the com comments, you can just comment on this if you have something to say out, okay? So with that, these are the overall of what is COE and what are the sessions that involve in the COE. Now, uh, let's back to the um, screen on, um, we look into the wrap up now on the summary. Uh, I will be uh, passed to Robin. So far, still, still with us, ah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, as, as you know, lah, COE is is a dashboard, right? You can see, um, it, it's pretty much a dashboard, lah, to help us to to govern the um the applications that that uh, you all have, right, in your tenant. So, um, so there'll be a few questions, ah. I I'm hoping, uh, you guys also will be asking a lot of questions. So uh, the, the, the questions that I, uh, if you ask me, that I would ask is that, right, uh, it looks very complicated, don't you think so? <laughs> yes, you have Power BI, you have all these dash, dashboard, it's, 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 it's uh, very, very good, very, very fancy. But um, do know that um, COE is, uh, yes, is, is also the direction of Microsoft, yeah. Uh, we, uh, as a SRKK, we are promoting Microsoft and therefore anything that is uh, best practice from Microsoft, uh, that's where we bring bring back to you guys. Lah. So yes, uh, within that components in Power BI, you have uh, so many pillars, right? You can do monitoring, you can do governance, you can do nurturing, right? All of this is, um, is good because uh, eventually there will be a question coming uh, from all of us is that, hey, who created these apps? Uh? <laughs> Right, or who created this workflow? <laughs> so yeah, um, slowly for the adoption processes, it makes sense um, to to start off with, you know, our IT department will, will do it first, right? But eventually, uh, as we move towards citizen developers, lah, then uh, then we will we will have that. Um, okay, uh, we also have an offer. So later on, my, my team will pop up the yeah the the offer uh in the screen so do do take a look and if you have more questions um you can definitely uh get back to us for that so um with that let's let's move ahead with the with the game right let me go to the next slide with the game sessions i i i hope um the game will be a little bit easier lah, huh? not not so overwhelming lah. Um, do log in to the to the URL. Uh, it's going to pop up very soon. Yeah, it's just a few questions, ah. Just to uh, keep us refreshed. Don't don't overwhelm our brain so much for now for the COE side. Yeah, but but do bear in mind COE is something that uh, the directions that uh, we are all going towards, lah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Go. Yes. Log in to the website URL enter the game code let's let's have fun together for the next few minutes right before we jump into a more serious q a session so um okay uh, i have seen uh, so many many people very good so let's okay i'll, I'll do a countdown um before we start so let's let's do a five four three two one okay come let's let's start mm. first questions out of four questions uh, um, power platform center of coe is part of microsoft 365 features and function ah uh, yeah tricky question <laughs> yeah, yes or no uh, Time's up. And let's see. 
Y to uh, Encik Amin. Uh, Aminuddin. Very good. So the answer is true. Yeah. Second question. Imagine hundreds of power apps and flow running across your tenant. Lah, and with no clue who created them, what they are for, and how they affect your licensing capacity. COE is the solutions to govern the applications. Ah, true or false? This one straightforward. Lah, huh? <laughs> okay, good. Let's see. Hmm. Wow, very good, uh, Aminuddin. Wonderful. Oh, zero false. Excellent. Next question. Uh, these are oh, tricky question. These are the three main components of COE. Except, uh, except, except, uh, except which one? Mm. So Anisa showed to us earlier uh, all the three components. Uh, um, let's take a look. Wow, Aminuddin, excellent, very good. Okay, last question. Um, let's take a look, last question. After today's session, I will consider COE to manage my tenant power apps and flow. Ah, yes or no? <laughs> good, yes, a lot. But we also have a few no. Yeah. Six more seconds, five more seconds to answer. I have three more people haven't answered yet. Zero. Time's up. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so majority of us is uh yeah, is looking forward or to consider lah. Or, um yeah, so I, I'm sure some of you might say like, hey, you know, COE might not be uh right now. But eventually, it might be something in the future, right? Or uh, maybe you are not even considering to adopt uh, Power Apps, Power Automate yet. Um, a lot of times, maybe it's because of your company direction, right? So there, there are uh, various reasons for that. Lah. Okay, good. Let's move on to Q&A. Um, for those that have questions, uh, do put it in the chat group all the Q and A's um, sessions, right? And then we have Anisa to help us. Um, Anisa, there's actually one question from Mr. Leong. This is more on the permission side lah, uh, in, the, um, in the COE side. So the question is, we might not have overall admin rights to govern, monitor the region uh, SharePoint lah. Can this COE only allow to govern um, certain site, lah, certain SharePoint site or certain region? Yeah, that's that's the questions. More on the permission side. Mm. And for the rest, yeah, do put it inside the chat group or the QA. Of course, for questions that is too long, you know, we can always bring it uh, offline. Lah, uh, Yeah, so um, Aniza, any uh, input? This is a very specific to permission site. Lah. Um, because as we know, um, to to run the COE, you need certain uh, admin role, right? To, to oversee everything. Now the question is, can we um, isolate it? I only want certain site. Because again, it's not that I, I don't want to see everybody's. It's just that it could yeah. be I don't have uh, the specific you know, permission for that lah, or the global admin lah, in this case lah, huh? um. Yes, so um, Mr. Leong's uh, question is, the starter can be add on into Power BI desktop, or uh, the need license, right? So yes, it can be add on uh, on the Power BI desktop, and also can extend to the, the cloud, if you have uh, with the right license. 
So without uh, the license, you still can use the Power BI to uh, display the COE, but on the desktop versions. Yeah, if you want to go for the top, you will be needing the license. Okay, Ken, um, I have another questions coming in saying that I'm using Power Apps for Automate, but I don't um, really know if I need to use your ELAS at this point of time. So what is your suggestion? Um, when should I use or when should I have a COE? Yep. So if you have Power Apps and Power Automate, which is a good, a good start of uh, this COE, so once you have this COE, you can have encourage more of your users to join on the development and become the citizen developers. So it's not meant that uh, once you have the citizen developer, then only you need the COE dashboard, but you can start up from now itself. So once you have this dashboard on board uh, already up, and when you have more developers being there for using this platform for development, you will have the visibility of what has been done in that platform. So our suggestion will be start up from now on the COE for the governance. So we do we do have prepared the governance first, and then we can have like a more on the developers. Okay, great. Um, there's a few more questions rolling out. I think the time constraint, we pick up one more questions. So the question is, what is the role of default environment mm -hmm. if we can create other environments like production, development, uh, UAT? Yeah. Okay. So the default environment is something is already in your tenant on your standard uh, Office 5 license. You already have this default environment where any of the users who have that uh, permissions to create the applications, they will go into the environment. They just can start to create. Okay, but the environment, the, the use of environment is to segregate on the, you, the purpose of the development. It can be on the production, it can be on the development, or it can be on the trial. It's because of to have the right uh, segregations and also the proper governance way. So the default will have all of them will have the permissions, but when you go for specific environment we can control on the access who can create the application in that environments because if let's say it's a production environment we doesn't want everyone to go into that production and make the changes right so we will have that restrictions or the the controls over the each of the environments that's why it's recommended to have the environments if you have if you are uh, creating many application and if you are having many of the developers Mm, good, good, Anisa. Um, I'm I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in. Uh, don't worry. Um, we are sh running out of time. Uh, we will definitely bring it offline and answer um individually lah. Um, so before we we end a uh, session, these sessions allow me to do some marketing lah for our next webinar, right? Which is coming up next. Um, this is for zero worry with uh, zero trust free uh, security, right? It will be showcased this month, 22nd, on Friday, 11 to 12. Yeah. So, yeah, this is another excellent, excellent webinar, right? If you are interested, you know, do come and join join with us. All right. So, yeah, with this, um, we will end our sessions. And, yeah, do send us uh, any more information that you need from the earlier pop-up, right? Uh, any in particular for COE uh, topics or any other topics related to Microsoft, drop us an email, right? Ping to us. Uh, we have it here on the screen right now. You can click into that as well, right? And then uh, we look forward to work together with you all. Um, and that I will have a closing with a happy weekend and stay safe, everybody. Mm. Goodbye.